two years ago was supposed to usher in a new era of reconciliation, according to the government. But on the eve of a United Nations report into alleged atrocities carried out by both sides, Channel 4 News has rare footage from inside the former Tamil stronghold in the north. It's an area where tens of thousands of Tamils are still forced to live in makeshift camps. There is evidence and testimony of systematic repression and the abuse of women. A warning, there are distressing images in this report by our Asia correspondent, John Sparks. A momentary glimpse of a troubled land. Scene stolen from a passenger seat window. Everyone's under surveillance. You can't do a thing without them knowing. This is northern Sri Lanka, where the military rules with an iron grip and residents live in fear. The civil war ended two years ago, but many here say the conflict's not over. They accuse the army of intimidation, land seizures and rape. Tonight, we broadcast startling new testimony and pictures. It's clear that the conditions that people faced um, and continue to face are simply not acceptable and do not meet international standards. Almost two years since the war has ended, the situation remains very grim for people living in the north and east. There are still very serious human rights abuses occurring. The Sri Lankan government and the separatist Tamil Tigers waged a long and bloody war in the north. Civilians, mostly Tamils, were caught in the middle. A UN war crimes panel thinks tens of thousands were killed, something the Sri Lankan government denies. There were few witnesses to this war. International observers were banned. And they're still prevented from traveling in the north. Our contact films in a town called Kilinochi. He takes an extraordinary risk. If caught, the punishment would be severe. It used to be the Tamil Tigers capital. Now the Sri Lankan 57th Army Division has stamped its mark on the community. Residents say army commanders here have seized private homes and businesses and fenced them off with barbed wire. These pictures seem to confirm that. The Sri Lankan government is also accused of taking land for hotels and other development projects. Locals told our contact that the military have stolen their personal possessions as well. We filmed a series of fields crammed with thousands and thousands of motorcycles. It's a very bad situation. In every village, the military occupy civilian homes. The people don't have rights. They have no voice. They have to accept it. After the war, the Sri Lankan government put civilians in a series of internment camps. Over the last year, the majority have been released, but many have found that they have no homes to return to. Our contact found this woman living under a rudimentary shelter. She'd set up camp in the middle of what appeared to be a minefield. We're protecting her identity for her own safety. We've lost our home and possessions. We're trying to start again, but look at the difficulties. There is water in our house. Look at our house. I don't know why God has given me this fate. Two young boys had been left to look after themselves in a home with no roof. Their father was dead and their mother had left them to work elsewhere, they said. The Catholic Bishop of Northern Sri Lanka, Joseph Rayapu, has confirmed some of our findings in testimony previously submitted to the Sri Lankan government. Twenty months after the war, he said, most of the displaced still have no housing and live under tarpaulin sheets. He added, the military has taken land belonging to the church without prior information or consultation. Our source told us that since the end of the civil war, the army has built bases and installations in every community in the north. In every village, there are military camps. Soldiers occupy civilian houses, and the government says to people, find your own way. Human rights groups say women are particularly vulnerable here, vulnerable to exploitation and sexual abuse by members of the armed forces. Our contact spoke to a number of women who said they'd been raped. They harassed me in ways I do not wish to say. About six or seven people came. I don't know how to describe it. They sexually abused me. I find it difficult to say how I feel. 
in a context where you have so much surveillance and where the security forces have so much power simply to turn up at somebody's house, to interrogate people, um, you know, to ask for documentation, many of these women feel very exposed. However, the Sri Lankan government told us tonight the military is involved in demining and rebuilding infrastructure. There has been international concern for the treatment of civilians during the Sri Lankan Civil War, but our evidence, filmed over several months, suggests that survivors of that conflict continue to suffer. Well, in response to our report, the Sri Lanka government has issued a statement. This report is full of allegations which lack credibility, transparency and verifiability. It is another part of a sinister campaign carried out according to a common pattern to discredit Sri Lanka as a time of importance, this time to coincide with the release of the UN Secretary-General's advisory panel report. A full version of the Sri Lankan statement is available on the Channel 4 News website.